Howdy, I'm Mikey Diaz. It's been rough for Toys R Us this week. Shortly after announcing bankruptcy, their founder, Charles Lazarus, passed away at the age of 94. Rest in peace. In other news, If you pay attention to international politics, you may have seen one of many headlines concerning elections in Europe and Asia. Political situations in other countries can be hard to follow. I met with Kate Todd Hunter to discuss. Let's recap. On March 4th, Italy held a national election to replace their leader after parliament was dissolved by their current president, Sergio Mattarella. All these different political parties is not new to Italy. Um, you know, we have the system with basically two major parties, um, but a lot of European countries, a lot of other countries have multiple parties in a parliament system. And so all these new political parties, um, I'm trying to keep track of them all. I mean, you have a lot of these new political parties in, in Italy are reacting to um, the EU, the European Union. Um, Italy is right in the middle of the Mediterranean, and so Italy and Greece are the nations that are really feeling uh, the brunt of, you know, these boatloads of, of, of um, refugees, you know, coming from places like Libya, uh, coming from Syria, and so uh, some of these political parties are, are extreme anti-immigrant political parties, and so that's their primary platform. The party that is against all the other parties is the one that ultimately was victorious, you know, with Five Star, um, which has a pretty anti-immigrant platform as well. A week later, China's legislators voted almost unanimously to eliminate an amendment they made to the Constitution from 1982, lifting a law that's limited the president to two five-year terms. This paves the way for their current president to be elected again and again. What I think is really interesting is how I think the motivation, you know, for, for Xi and for the Communist Party to, to get rid of term limits um, is to strengthen China from within. You know, Xi is hugely popular and he's developed this like huge cult of personality that people are sort of comparing to Mao. And lastly, Russia held their general election on the 18th. Vladimir Putin won decisively, clinching 77% of votes. This means he will serve for six more years. Um, it's more because, you know, they have or they had a two-term limit, which he already fulfilled in 2008. And when he changed the term limits for president, it was that he could run for two more. They simply couldn't be uh, more than two consecutive. So he was prime minister for four years, then he ran again. So in 2024, he will have served his second consecutive six-year term. Um, but it also will have marked fully 25 years that he's been in control of the country. He took over at the very end of 1999, uh, and that would run into the spring, at least, of 2024. By the time the next Russian election comes around, Putin will have served his second consecutive term meaning that he'll be obliged by law to step down. I'm Mikey Diaz, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next week on The Transcript.